Hello, I'm Anna, a Level 1 student at the Global Forecasting School and an economist at the National Bank of Georgia. Today, I'm excited to share a recent addition to our list of foundational economic readings selected by the Global Forecasting School students. This year, we've added the Conflict Theory of Inflation Revisited by Robert Rothorn, published in 2024 in the Review of Political Economy. This paper re-examines Rothorn's 1977 conflict theory of inflation, updating its implications for today's economic context. To provide some background, Rothorn originally developed the conflict theory of inflation in the late 1970s. His model frames inflation as an outcome of competing claims on national income, primarily between workers aiming for higher wages and firms striving to maintain profit margins. This tug of war can lead to unanticipated inflation, especially when workers' wage, demands and firms' pricing behaviours remain uncoordinated. In his updated paper, Rothorn revisits this model to address recent economic challenges, such as the cost of living crisis in the United Kingdom. He draws parallels between today's situation and the oil shocks of the 1970s highlighting how similar conditions of supply chain disruptions, energy price spikes, and wage demands are re-emerging. A central feature of Rothorn's theory is the concept of the aspiration gap. This gap represents the difference between what workers aim to receive in real wages and the share of income that firms target in profits. When these aspirations conflict, unanticipated inflation can arise as wages and prices spiral upwards in response to each side's attempts to meet their goals. In practical terms, this inflationary pressure can occur in staggered markets, where prices and wages are adjusted at different times. As each party responds to changes by setting higher prices or demanding higher wages, the cumulative effect may lead to inflationary spirals, much like those seen during periods of economic stress. One of the significant contributions of Rothorn's paper is his analysis of the UK's recent cost of living crisis. He argues that much of the burden from rising import costs has been shifted onto consumers, particularly wage and salary earners. In the face of higher costs, Firms have maintained profit margins by passing these costs on to consumers, contributing to inflation while real wages have declined. According to Rothorn, this mirrors past situations where companies resisted taking on additional costs and instead defended their profit shares. The outcome is similar to the 1970s scenario, where higher import costs led to rising domestic prices and wage demands, culminating in a wage price spiral. Rothorn's analysis has critical implications for economic policy. One traditional approach to managing inflationary pressure, as we saw in the 1970s, involved wage and price controls. However, in today's environment, central banks typically use monetary policy to create economic slack, aiming to moderate wage and price growth by reducing demand. While this approach can be effective in containing inflation, Rothorn highlights its drawbacks especially in the form of reduced output and employment. The incomes policy of Karl Marx, as he terms it, uses economic slack to reduce inflationary pressures, but may also lead to recessionary conditions if applied too aggressively. Rothorn's The Conflict Theory of Inflation Revisited is a valuable addition to the Global Forecasting School's curriculum, offering insights into inflation dynamics that resonate with current economic conditions. The theory underscores the role of market power, profit retention, and the labor market in shaping inflation, suggesting that managing inflationary pressures may require a balanced approach, attentive to both wage dynamics and firm pricing power. Thank you all for listening. If you appreciate the work of the Better Policy Project and our efforts at the Global Forecasting School to democratize high quality education, please consider subscribing to our channel. We aim to provide opportunities for individuals to become top economists, often without the prohibitive costs associated with programs at elite institutions like MIT, Princeton or Harvard. 
our mentors, including former IMF experts like Douglas Laxton, Robert Ford, Iwanis Halikias, and Hamid Faraki, guide us with invaluable expertise to bring out the best in the next generation of economists. This has been Anna, a level one student at the Global Forecasting School and an economist at the National Bank of Georgia. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and leave a comment to join the conversation. See you next time.